Hi, I'm Jamie from Stonemaier Games, and today I'm going to talk about my favorite mechanism in the game, Cryo, which I played recently, but just Megan. It was a two-player game. It took about an hour. It was a delight to play. This is, I mean, it's a couple different things. It's a worker placement game where you're placing workers and activating different spots. But most important, perhaps most importantly, you are rescuing people. So the theme of the game is that you have crash landed on this icy planet. And as the sun sets, you are trying to rescue all the people that have been scattered across the icy void. And you're trying to save them and bring them, or save them from where they've been dropped off on the, on the surface and then bring them into caverns below the ice where they can be protected from the night, from the cold night. Uh, so it's a really interesting twist on area control because you're trying to have the majority of the people in each of these caverns and have as many people as possible down here. Um, but to get these, the, the tokens, the people that you need for the area control, you have to actually first rescue them. You don't like have your own supply of workers that you just get to, get to place down here. You have to go collect them. I thought that was a neat twist. My favorite mechanism in the game, though, and the thing that Tom and Luke, the designers of this game, do so well, I've, I've seen them do it in uh, Dwellings of, El of Eldervale as well, is that they give you interesting things to do on the turns that you spend to retrieve your workers. So in Cryo, one of the main actions you can take on the board, uh, there's some printed actions, but there are also these little tokens that you set up on the board during the, during the game, during the setup of the game. And if you place a worker adjacent to one of them, instead of taking an action, as your action, you can gather one of those tokens. And with those tokens, you can either gain the resources right away, like they might have a gem on it and a leaf. Um, you can gain those resources right away if you need them right away, or you can put them on your player mat in one of these open slots. You can see there's many open slots. So there's some in this top row, some in the bottom row. This one doesn't even have a top row. And what this means is that later on, when you take a retrieve turn and you retrieve, you pull one of your drones back to say this spot, if I have a token right here, it's saying I can pay this cost to gain this benefit. Pay this cost to gain this benefit. Uh, this one's completely modular. I can determine what the cost and the benefit is. Uh, same thing down here. I guess there are none other than this one that have uh, that have a, a benefit or, or cost pre-printed and then a benefit below it. It's mostly just benefits. So you are creating your own little retrieval engine here. And there's even a free one down here. Like There's no cost right here. You can just put a token right there and whenever you retrieve, you gain that benefit. This feels really good. I had to say, really, really good. Even, I mean, they did this a, a little bit in Dwellings of Eldervale. I think this is even better, though, because it you you retrieve pretty frequently in this game. Um, you only have three workers. You can't get any more workers. And so every four turns, you're retrieving, and you might even retrieve more often than that, especially if your retrieve benefits have gotten really powerful. But just the idea that you can create your own schemata of retrieval benefits feels awesome. Uh, because these are huge benefits. Getting a card or being able to play a card is huge in this game. Getting a wild resource, huge. Getting the energy, you need energy to go down under the surface. To get workers, you need workers. These are like all the crucial things that you need to do in this game. And you can do them on your retrieve turn at a cost of your own choosing because you've gathered tokens uh, to put them here. What this also does, and in, in my opinion, I think is, this is really clever, is that some of the tokens at first glance just look better than others. So like on my first turn of the game, I got a token that gave me um, gave me a crystal and a leaf representing food, I think. I got both of them. Some of the tokens are one or the other. Some of the tokens just have a single icon on them. So normally in a game, the token that token that I chose would just be objectively better than those other tokens. But not so in this game, because if you gain a, a token with say a single leaf on it, that's a great cost. One leaf is a better cost than a crystal and a leaf. So having these tokens that are kind of lesser in comparison, if they were only benefits, those lesser tokens actually become great cost options for your top row up here. Um, yeah, yeah, really, really interesting uh, engine building through retrieval system here with these tokens that you're gathering. And, uh, and as one also nice little hook here, um, at any time if you want, you can spend on your turn, you can spend up to one token from your mat. So you, if you realize that you're just not using part of this engine that you've created, you can remove a token, get rid of it, and gain the resources on it. You can scrap it, essentially. And that's nice, too. We didn't use that in our game, but I like having that backup option. 
Really amazing system here. I'd love to hear your thoughts on other retrieval systems in game games that you have really enjoyed. Ways that you can upgrade that retrieval system. I do a little bit of it in Expeditions. I've seen it in Revive. Revive has a nice retrieval system. And I mentioned Dwellings of Eldervale. Uh, Cryo, also one of the best. One of the best retrieval systems, worker retrieval systems that I've seen in a game. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, whether it's about that or if it's about another mechanism in Cryo that you really enjoy. Thanks.